If you go digging around on large companies' websites for digital services or digital subscriptions, it's pretty likely that you're going to find tons of content pages and collections, sometimes to a degree that might feel kind of strange or over the top. Canva has a color collection so that you can learn the meaning and color combinations of tons of colors, including periwinkle. And Webflow has a glossary so that you can explore the definition for save, which is that the designer automatically saves your progress every 10 seconds. So now you know. And even on my personal website, I have a page example CMS collection and just setting up a couple of simple collections has made me the featured snippet and the number one result for the term glossary page. If you need other examples, go to large digital company websites like HubSpot and search around until you find pages that seem to be only there for the sole purpose of being tailored for SEO terms. Because SaaS companies and other websites love to secretly consume as much traffic as they possibly can through search terms that are actually pretty generic. And with Webflow making it super easy to create CMS collections combined with AI tools that mean we can quickly generate the content itself, we can very quickly create simple CMS collections in Webflow to hit SEO focused terms. So that's what we're looking at today, programmatic SEO by creating and publishing super simple CMS collections. We're gonna create a list of terms and definitions, import them into Webflow, create a page around these terms, and then expand the glossary page into a long form piece of content. We're gonna do all of this in less than five minutes, so stick around. So this is our website that we're going to be generating a glossary around. It's a wellness library, so we're gonna be thinking about hitting search terms like meditation, core, Pilates, yoga, all of this good stuff. So we're gonna start by simply creating a bunch of terms and definitions. I've already gone ahead and done this, but just note that all of this was generated super, super quickly using ChatGPT. So here you can see I've just quickly, literally asked it to create a long list of terms and then super quick definitions around those terms so I can quickly create a list. And so I'm gonna download this. This is what we're gonna add into our Webflow project. And I've already got ahead and created a collection, but it's completely plain right now. Nothing has been done to it. And so we're gonna import our collection that we just created. And so the term is going to literally just be the name and then the short definition is just gonna be a new field that we've added. I'm gonna quickly import these. And as you can tell, we're already uh, adding in a whole bunch of different items. And again, not every single one of these items is going to land as a winning term that people are searching for. But the point is if we make a bunch of different ones, some of them will. So now that we've added these terms and the different definitions, we're gonna create a glossary page. Again, super simple, I've already created one. Just think about, uh, you could literally duplicate your blog page and then just add in glossary, a quick intro, and then we have our collection of items. So I'm just going to add in the name of the glossary item and then the short definition. Uh, we're gonna adjust this a little bit so it looks a little bit more like an actual block that can be clicked on. I might just make this a bit smaller and maybe even make this one a little bit smaller as well. Just make that small. And then this is gonna be a block that can be clicked. Let me just style this ever so slightly. A little bit of padding. And something like this is fine for now. Not many people are actually gonna see this page because the way that people are gonna find the page is through the individual glossary pages themselves. Uh, let's just make sure that it is linking to the right page, which it is. So I'm gonna go ahead and click over to our glossary page. All I've done here is uh, super quickly copied and pasted that glossary page that we just had. And then this guy is pulling from the title of the, um, of the item that we've just created. And then I'm just gonna add in the actual definition here. Again, those are the only inputs that we actually have. The title and then the description and then we're gonna ignore this for now and scroll down and we see all of our other terms. Let me just add in those other terms again. And so if people land on this page, they're gonna be able to see a whole bunch of other examples uh, of the glossary that they might want to go to. So now that we have a super simple page, we could already go ahead and I could delete this and we could publish this, but we're gonna build these pages a little bit more so that they are ranking for the different kinds of terms that people are searching around the phrase. Going back to an example like Canva, all we're doing is simply following this format of uh, introducing the term 
and then creating content around all of the search terms that people might be searching for. And again, they have hundreds of different color meanings of a bunch of different colors. Not all of these are gonna rank, not all of these are gonna become number one, but the more shots that you take, the more likely you're going to be able to hit some of those high numbers and uh, rank on page one of Google. So I'm gonna go into answer the public. You can use any keyword tool that you like, but I'm just gonna use answer the public for now. Um, and I'm gonna type in meditation. This is kind of the theme for all of these keyword terms that we have. And we're, we wanna ask what kind of search terms are people actually searching for around this phrase? So when they're not just searching for meditation, what are the actual terms and phrases that they're using? This is gonna show us a bunch of examples of uh, kind of how to, why, when, all of this good stuff. And we're gonna use, uh, use these answers as kind of a template to fill out our long form content. So here I can see a whole bunch of examples, how it helps, how it changes the brain, is it good for me, is it good for this, is it good for that? I'm gonna think of these, I'm gonna look down, I'm gonna read all of the different examples, and I'm basically just gonna create a template where there's kind of a blank space where our term is gonna go. I have actually already just outlined a couple of examples here, but basically all we're doing is creating different terms around that one search term. So what is meditation? What are the effects of meditation? Is meditation good long-term? And then we're gonna take that template and we're gonna do it for all of our pages. Now, we don't need to do it for all of our pages straight away. We might wanna start with the most popular terms, but essentially we're gonna create a long form page around this content. I am going to copy this list, go into ChatGPT, and I'm just gonna ask it to create a SEO friendly uh, long form blog post with these headings. I'm gonna drop in all of those headings and I'm just gonna say create an SEO friendly, uh, an SEO friendly long form, long form, let me just say long just so it's not confused, blog post around the topic and we'll paste in that topic that we were just looking at. Let's do our number one for now with these headings. I'm just gonna hit go and it's gonna create a super long um, article for us that we're gonna add into our glossary. And again, each of these titles that we are uh, creating content around is the kind of things that people might be searching for. So if they're not searching for mindfulness meditation, they might be searching for what is or what are the effects. And since we're creating a glossary page rather than a blog post page, we don't need to worry as much about adding an imagery, adding an inline links. Google is kind of looking for a super simple page instead. So now that all of the content has been generated, I'm just gonna literally go and copy this content as is. I'm gonna go into my glossary page, uh, into my collection that is, and I'm just gonna add a rich text element. This is gonna be our long form uh, text. Save that and I'm just gonna go and find my mindfulness meditation and I'm gonna paste in the long form text. I will make this H2 um, for now and then maybe make these H3 or actually I'm gonna leave this as H1 and H2. Save that and I'm just gonna make the term itself, this one up here, um, H2. Uh, there's some thinking to do there. I might wanna change that uh, later on, but let me at least add in this long form text. And I'm also gonna hide this section, hide our long form text, only show it if the, um, if the full text is actually added in. So we have our super simple page for all of our terms. And then we have our long form page with a really detailed version of um, the phrases that people might be searching for. And obviously this is unstyled, so there's a lot that we can do to go in and style it and make it look good. But even now, if we were to publish this, we would start ranking for some of these phrases that people are searching for. The only other thing I might add is, I am not completely sure, but I don't think Google loves if you publish 100 pages all at once. So the only other thing that I would do is probably slow down. I would probably select all of these and then just make them a draft for now, change them all to draft, 
And now I'm only gonna select a couple of these to publish straight away and then schedule in the rest to be a couple of days apart. And that's just so we're not adding 100 new pages in the same second, um, which might kind of look suspicious and spammy. So I'm gonna add in a couple of them, including our long form one, and I'm gonna stage these ones for publish. And then I can then schedule the rest however I want to. So I can schedule the rest in at different times so that we can set it up and that it's gonna automatically slowly post all of our items throughout the course of a week or a month. So that's how we can create super simple collections for SEO ranking in Webflow. But before we finish, there's obviously some questions that we need to ask. Number one, where did you get that t-shirt from? But number two, and more importantly, will this actually work? Or is this just another shot in the dark? Well, the answer to this is that yes, it will work and no, it won't. We're creating a giant glossary so that we have a bunch of search terms that might be hitting people's searches in Google, but not every single one is going to rank as well as we want it to. The point is we take a bunch of shots and some of them are actually going to stick. The other reason why this is going to work is that most people simply aren't gonna bother with these kind of SEO techniques. They're just gonna to stick to a simple blog and even if they're using ChatGPT to power their blogs, they're not gonna be thinking in this way and creating a bunch of different terms around the kind of things that people might be searching. It's a very different way of thinking about SEO rather than just making simple blogs. And so because of that, most people simply aren't going to do it. And that is why it's going to work. If it's not the kind of thing that would work, then Webflow wouldn't be creating a giant ask glossary for themselves and me creating a simple page I shouldn't be able to rank to number one just off of a couple of examples and a simple description. So thanks for watching. Follow for more about Webflow, SEO, and how they can work together. And I'll see you on the next one.